Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bearded Klansman podcast slash whatever we do to distribute this outwards. <laughs> I'm Kyle. I'm Dom. All right, so today we're going to talk about in Dan Zach's Pit, the new pack that came out just this week for uh, Game of Thrones Living Card Game. If you weren't sure what this podcast was about, uh, you know now, and you should see that logo. <laughs> yeah, we talk nothing but thrones here. Thrones all day, every day. All right, so uh, we're just going to jump through the cards here, kind of give our thoughts. We'll do a rating system from zero to, what, five, we say? Yeah, yeah. that's right. So zero would be like binder fodder or maybe even something that you use if you were stranded in the mountains to keep yourself warm, um, as clansmen do. Uh, <laughs> uh, five is like an auto-include in maybe any deck that you can put it in. I mean, bearing this game's deck building restrictions, five is, five is good. Five is gold. Yes, and this is just personal opinion, so everyone can have a different... Uh, rating system on this on these cards so yep all right so uh, the first card we have is a two cost character with a military and power icon with one strength it is loyal to the house of stark and it has a house mormont trait it is bear island scout uh, res reaction after you marshal bear island scout and if, if each character you control has a stark affiliation search your deck for a house mormont card and reveal it and add it to your hand and then shuffle your deck what do you think dom I uh, actually really like it. Um, anytime you can uh, marshal a cheap loyal card and search your deck for another character to put in hand, I think that's a that's a good trade off. Oh yeah, and I'm looking at the Mormont cards, right? Let's see if I can find any. Uh, you know, you got Bear Island Scout, which is you know if you have mm -hmm. a if each character you have oh, that's this one. Whoops, Bear Island Host. Discard a gold from it uh, to not kneel somebody. You have mm -hmm. Mage Mormont. You have the uh, Old Bear if you're going into Night's Watch, you know. Uh, exactly. Uh, I think yeah. Okay, yeah. So. Isn't Old oh, Bear? No, you're right. Old Bear loyal. Yeah, no, you're you're uh, actually it doesn't have the Mormont trait either. But you got those three cards. Mm -hmm. We've always kind of been talking about Mormont as a trait and how there's a very few cards with Mormont as a trait, but you know, mm -hmm. there's always a way. There's always going to be more cards. So. Yeah, I'm actually gonna. Pull up Card Game DB. Me too. Um, that's if, you guys, if you guys don't know, that's where you can look up all the cards. You can search cards by their trait, um, by their names, and all that. So, and they're usually pretty good on getting the uh, spoilers up for new packs coming out. Mm -hmm. I, I use Thrones DB too, uh, but Card Game DB usually is the one that's direct from Fantasy Flight, so they have a lot more of a expedient like kind of card updates and stuff. But Bear Island Scout, I think this guy's probably like a three right now, but I want him to be higher, but um I I I'm I get what you're saying. I just think I think it's more of a I think a four for me. Um, just because of the fact that it's loyal, it's cheap, and with breaking ties being a, a thing right now. I think it's it's That's a true. little bit higher up there. Plus then you can flea bottom in or um you can use summer to put it back in your hand. That's true. That's a good point. With breaking ties, this character is pretty sweet because you get his effect and then he's done, and you just kind of toss him to breaking ties, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's exactly. a good point. Yeah, I, th I mean, I just his effect though doesn't hit hard on what it's doing to me. Like it's just kind of like House Mormont, so you get Mage or you get the the host, right? Uh, well, you get Baron Loyalist. Um, that's right. Have, that's right too. You have Daisy. You have Daisy Mormont, you have Mage Mormont, um, and yeah, Baron and Host. So there's there's four, let's see, five total House Mormont cards, including the Bear Island Scout. So, I mean, it's a, it's definitely uh, there's definitely some options, you know, especially if you want to get some renown in. That's true. You know, on the board. So, I th I think it's a good card. Overall, I think Stark got a good uh, boost this pack. Yeah, and so that leads us straight... So this one, again, three for me, four for Dom. That leads us right into our next card here, which is going to be uh, Skagos. It's a north tra traded location with Shadow. So this is the Stark Shadow location that we kind of seen mm -hmm. throughout the last two cycles. Or last this cycle, sorry. I forget we're in Dance of Shadows still. Uh, Shadow 1, 
Uh, so it's going to pop two to pop out of shadows, and it says Neil Skagos and sacrifice a standing start character to search your deck for a character with the same title as a sacrifice card and put it into play and then shuffle your deck. So start got two tutor effects in a single pack. That's crazy. Yeah, I actually kind of like it. Um, I was talking to some friends of mine in a group that I'm part of, and uh, we we're just you know spitballing ideas, and one of the ideas is you know paying like four gold for uh Catelyn Stark, you know, sacrificer with this uh location and then you can put in Fat Cat, which is a seven cost mm -hmm. uh character for free. That works with any uh Stark character too. I mean like you could do it with Brands, yeah. you could do it with Eddards, you could do it with Sansa's, you could do it with you know, anybody that's that's doubled. And so it does it does exclude itself from being able to use like a lot of the Jon Snow dupes and stuff, which kind of is mm -hmm. like a control factor I think. But I mean, that's so cool. Like, that's such a good way to get rid of milk. It's such a good way to, like... I mean, it's an action, so you could do it after the poison counters assigned from, like, you know, Tears of Liss or something like that. Well, that and uh, another thing is uh, attachment control, you know, if you yeah. have a character that's milked. But also, if you have um, Rob Stark out and, uh, you know, you sacrifice character, which then triggers him, you send all your characters... Um, all your star characters, I believe. Um, and, you know, with standing being a, a key thing right now with uh, the withering cold, mm -hmm. you know, standing standing is key in general. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, and so the fact that this just synergizes so well with Stark out of, like, the out of the box, it just makes it, like, a five for me because this card's mm -hmm. so money in almost any Stark deck. Yeah, I would actually. I mean, I would say about. A, I would say it's uh, three, um, three or four. You know, because like I said, you know, actually I take that back. I, I'm gonna call it a four just because of the fact of like attachment control. Mm -hmm. You know, even if even if you got like a milk on a like Wyman or Edard or whoever, you can sacrifice them and then just put them right back out. Yeah, and, and actually. Yeah, I th I think it has like a lot of power. I it's you, you can even get something with the same one. Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It it gives you so much uh, like toolboxing to just get rid of stuff that you don't like or deal with situations that you need to deal with, right? Yeah, exactly. So. And I mean, like I said, I give it like a four yeah. just because you know there's there's multiple uses you can get out of it. Mm -hmm. All right, next card's going to be Brightwater Host, six cox character with a military and power icon with five strength. Army and House Florent traits. Can't have any attachments. Uh, can't even have weapons, so that's interesting, but that's kind of standard for hosts. Uh, reaction, after you win a challenge in which Brightwater Host is attacking, choose a card in the shadows and return it to its owner's hand. Then a unique Tyrell character you control gains two power. That's kind of cool, but super, like, meta. Like, super... In like, do you have shadows a lot in, in your meta? Okay, run Brightwater Host. Um, well, the shadows right now is, uh, you know, kind of, I wouldn't say weak, but there's not a lot of options. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it's looking ahead, you know, I think shadows is going to become more of a thing. Um, with that being said, it doesn't say a shadow card of your opponent's. It yeah. can be one of your own. I was just going to um, say that, too. <laughs> Just in, just in case if you want to get that additional two power, you know, to kind of put pressure on the board or maybe even to close out a game. Yeah, I, th I mean, especially Tyrell has, I mean, I think Tyrell has a decent amount of Shadows cards, too, um, like, that are playable. Yeah, and uh, I mean, honestly, I mean, as much as I like this card, I'm me for me i'm gonna give it like a three just because it's a six cost um character but mm -hmm. even though it's five strength i mean there's i feel like there's other cards that are around that cost range that are you know a little bit better you know like randall and, and didn't uh, he get isn't he on the, the restricted list now randall no. yeah big big oh no i'm thinking of somebody else maybe no uh tyrell they got a a lot of their events got on the restricted list, um, which is in effect on the 8th yeah. of October. Um, if you want, let me pull it up here real quick. Uh, uh, yeah, so this one for me is like probably, uh, I think it's like a two or three. It just depends on like if you need to do that or not, or if that's the deck you're playing. But like, 
I mean, it's it's a sixth Vicon for five, but it can't it can it protects itself a little bit because it can't have any attachments. But uh, there's other things I think people would rather spend six on in Tyrell. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, that only the effect only works when you have a card in shadow. So, and you have to win, you know, a challenge with them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's a hit or miss. You know, it can be with that. So mm -hmm. that's why I kind of gave it a three. You know, um, yep. You know, you can. It's okay to play, but you know. Yeah, I totally like I said, understand. It, it's a hit or miss. Mm -hmm. I think All for right. the effect. Our next one is the second Tyrell card, a three-cost event, the Might of the Reach. Uh, it's a loyal Tyrell card, and it says choose as an action in the challenge phase. Choose a participating character until the end of the challenge. That character gains 10 strength. So, like, I mean, I guess for money, it's a straight value. I mean, it's not bad. Like, you're paying 3 to get 10, which is probably, like, the best economic in the economic play in the game. But, yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, you're going to win that <laughs> challenge, I guess. <laughs> Well, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, if you don't, you've really misplayed that one. Well, I think this is this card is, uh, you know, um, kind of a one of their ways to answering the free folk uh, agenda when you have like Magna Mighty or uh, One One, you know, which both of them are like eleven strength. Yeah. You know, and and the possibility of adding another eleven strength. I mean, that's just insane. That's so that's I think a good is point. kind of way of. I think that was their one way of trying to counter at least that potentially or you know to to get some more use out of the new Brienne um, which you know once you boost her strength to like you know I think like 20 strength or something then she has all these different keywords um, let me see let me pull it back up here yeah it's like I, I agree like I think this is like, like another card that's kind of like what is your current meta right now do you need to like win a single character challenge like is mm -hmm. there like I'm trying to think about it and is there just like super great effects that happen if Tyrell wins a challenge like is this just something you throw on like like uh, the Raiders to like barf an attachment off the board <laughs> like yeah well I mean I you know not to be overkill, but then you do this to like Randall Tarly, then you're restanding him. Yeah, that that's true. <laughs> that's like the most expensive way to stand Randall Tarly in the game. But yeah, I yeah, it's giving work. I mean, I'm just like I guess this is one of those things where like if you this uh, kind of harkens back to Corset, right? If you absolutely need to trigger a five more five or more win challenge thing, you could pay three to do it, right? Yeah, let me. I'm pulling up Brienne here. So with Brienne, her reaction is after you win a challenge, which she's participating, her strength, if her strength is 6 or higher, she gains a power. 10 or higher, choose another character, they get plus 3 strength until the end of the phase. F or 15 or higher, stand to her and draw a card. Mm -hmm. So with that, and she's a 5 strength, so, you know, automatically cool. with that event, with that event, she automatically gains all 3 of the... the yeah reactions so i think that was their way of of doing that but also potentially another way to you know combat against that waddling uh free folk deck yeah so she gets she gets the power she gets the another character three okay okay yeah i mean that's kind of cool or, yeah or potentially you know if you have an opponent that thinks they're gonna kneel all their characters for power or something and think they're gonna win it you know then all of a sudden boom you you slap this bad boy out you know then you just block their power challenge or military or whatever yeah that's a good point because you could like even throw this on like a chump and it would still be really good yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah, right. yeah. so i think it's like it. maybe like a it's still a two or three for me three maybe just because it's pretty expensive but i guess it's in the faction that can spend money i, I yeah yeah so yeah honestly, I, it just depends on when you build this build around, around. Um, um, I would, I would give this give about, about a three or three four, or four um, um, to be honest with you. With you. More, more so, so for if you're, if you're, if you're using the, the, the new Brienne, in my opinion. Okay. Yeah, I agree. The new Brienne's probably the good target for this. Uh, your your target, audio like, is like super gargly. Is there anything that changed on your end? <clears throat> no, sorry. It might have been my voice. Oh, no. It's like a, it's, it's digital garble. I'm just, sometimes, oh, it, oh no, no, now it's good again. Okay, cool. Okay, maybe it's my internet connection. Okay. 
Our next card is going to be uh, the Three Fingered Hob. It's a unique Night's Watch character. Two cost intrigue with one strength. It's a steward. No attachments except weapons. Pretty standard for Night's Watch. It says after you check reserve, if your hand size is lower than your reserve value, draw two cards. That's pretty sweet. So it's after you mm -hmm. check reserve. Yeah, which I, I like a lot. That could be really cool. Like, I mean, we've been talking uh, in local in Colorado about like this kind of like weird reserve meta thing. <laughs> like, can it work? Yeah. Does it happen? This card makes it a little better because you can even hurt your own reserve, and you're still getting two cards at the end of the end of every turn. Remember, like, think about how much more draw power that is when you're drawing double your opponent. You know. Well, that and also, you know, if it frees up, like, if you're afraid of, you know, potentially losing a card, and, but you have the gold to spend it you know you have that option to spend it and then you could you know you're going to get two more cards at the at the end of the round so yeah yeah that's true i didn't think about that but that's actually a good point as well like uh you can like be a little bit more frivolous with how you do your cards because you're like trying to um you know you don't have to be as careful because you're going to get to draw two extra cards so that's a good point well, that and they they have a couple of locations where they bump up your reserve by one. I know Samuel. That actually hurts uh, you with this guy, right? Well, no. If, if you're then your reserve is always going to be. Oh no, you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, your hand's always going to be below the reserve potentially, right. so you're automatically drawing. You're drawing four cards around, which mm -hmm. is good. At least four cards around, which is always good. Yeah. So I like him. I give it like a four. Yeah, I think he, I mean he's got an intrigue icon in, in in Night's Watch. His strength's super low though, like very scary low, but he's still Actually, cool as long as he doesn't get killed. Uh, you know what? I, I'm gonna go with a five on this one just because it's a low cost, it's easy to get out, it's loyal, um, and then the reaction on top of it. I mean, you know, just any time you can draw more cards, I'm I'm all for it. And, yeah. You know. You don't have to win a challenge. You don't have to do anything other than just have lo lower cards than your reserve. Yeah, def I think I'm on a, like four for this guy just because of the draw. I just worry about his like longevity on the board, I guess. Well, the good thing is, is you know he's unique, so you know you can always just put a dupe on him. That's true. Uh, all right, our next card is going to be Hard Home. It's a two cost shadow location for Night's Watch. It's unique. Uh, it's got the north trait, and it shadows two, so this costs one more as per usual to shadows out. It says, kneel and sacrifice hard home to choose an opponent. That op that player sacrifices a standing character. Oh, boy, howdy. I want to hit a, 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 like a robber breath in this. So mad. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you know, right before that phase where, like, Robert goes in for the super smash, smash down challenge, and it's like you've yeah. kneeled everybody else or something. Or maybe you use this as, like, a Night's Watch... Oh, I guess you can't play. Oh, you can. It's not loyal, so you could throw this in banner and like just sit, sit everybody's st character strategically and just make them sack their like big beat stick or something. Yeah, I mean honestly, uh, with stand being a key thing um, nowadays, uh, you know sometimes you know people might restand a character or keep a character standing just because they want to win dominance. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean. You can definitely potentially even just have them sacrifice a chud or potential, you know, an average character. More likely, they're bigger guys. They're gonna kneel uh, for the challenges. This this is use... like perfect counter against like crossing though. Like, if someone's playing crossing, they like kind of go all in on that last challenge, especially in certain factions. You could like mm -hmm. stop them from doing that, right? So. They like they lose like two plus one character strength in that last challenge instead of just that normal character strength, which could be kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, I think the the idea of the shadows is kind of cool because mm -hmm. you can, you know, like I said, you can put it in shadows, and then when you really need it to come out, you know, you can just bounce it in uh, during the dominance phase, and uh, then you can just react it, do its action. Let's just say to kneel or have them sacrifice a you know a bigger character or even a smaller character you know so then when your claim for military goes into effect the next round it's a little bit more hopefully it's a little bit more um brutal on their end yeah i mean that that's a perfect use for this as well for three gold you can make them like hit two you can basically like see brace your military claim to two <laughs> you know yeah uh and it, anytime you can sacrifice a character on top of your military claim mm-hmm 
you, you know, you just raised your, your claim by one. Yeah, and so I, I think I'm giving this like a four. I think this card's so solid, like it it's good. Um, well, without doing any playtesting or anything like that, I'm gonna give it. Yeah, I would say about a three or four. Um, probably more of a four because you know they have some other shadow cards, so your opponent just can't automatically just guess what that what card is. is. Yeah. And that's just kind of the case card. with most shadow right now, right? Because like we're up at the point where like there's enough shadow cards for each faction that are slightly playable that I don't, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, at least I know Targaryen. If you see a card going in, in shadows for Targaryen, you know it's Aegon. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> which I I haven't really seen anyone play the Assassin uh, card, which, you know, I think it, it should get some love. You know, it's going to it's going to get in there and people are going to be like, whoa, I didn't even see that coming. <laughs> exactly. They're like, oh, I thought it was Aegon. Nope, it's the Assassin. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, cool. Uh, f so our first uh, Baratheon card, we have two-cost power icon, it's one power character. Storm's End Maester is a loyal maester. As a challenge action, you can kneel him and choose an opponent, and if you have more power on your faction card than that opponent, draw a card. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I mean, it's a... I, I take it. Um, I don't know, to be honest with you. I mean, I like I like drawing cards. Yeah. But at the same time, like you got like red, you got the red keep. Um, you got uh, that other location that if you win dominance, I, mean, I think it's the armory. Mm -hmm. um, you That's can draw true. A card. Tabot's armory or whatever Tabot Mott's armory. You, I, I think you're right. Um, I, I first I was like, ooh, draw a card. Okay, cool. On a two cost character, draw a card. We just liked that a second ago. But here you, you have to be winning already, and that feels win more to me and mm -hmm. that doesn't feel like a card that's going to get put in well I mean and I just thought of this idea you know because Baratheon is pretty strong on the power end um, with the icons so let's just say theoretically you know you have um, Flea Bottom out you and Breaking Ties oh wait no I think that's on the restriction list now ah uh, dang it never yep. mind yeah those are both on there <laughs> Uh, you're living. You're you've played too much. You've played too much Flea Bottom, and now you're living in Flea Bottom world. I know it's, <laughs> it's such a it's such a broken card, but you know, yeah, I enjoy it. <laughs> but no, I was thinking, you know, you can do it, get them, you know, sacrifice the character, and then bring it back in to do it twice. But that won't work. So never mind. But it's uh, not a unique character, so you can get multiple uh, characters out. So yeah. There, there is a lot of two cost cards in Baratheon well, yeah. that I think are better than this card, though. Yeah, I mean you got like Moon Boy. Shireen. Yeah. Shireen, yeah, uh, Moon Boy, and stuff. So, yeah. Bastard in Hiding yeah. used to be cool. Edric Storm wasn't too bad, uh, but then you have no. the the yeah so. Yeah, I'd probably give this like a two. To mm -hmm. be yeah, I'm not going to give it a one because I think drawing a card is still good text on a card, and it could probably do something if you get the right deck around it. But um, If anything, it's good military claim. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. All right, our second Baratheon card is a three-cost non-loyal card that's got an item and roller trait. It's called Glamour, which uh, an uh, attachment with a roller trait, that's like one of the few, right? Oh no, they have other Rolor traits. Yeah, one of the but it's like there's not a ton of them, right? Well, you have Lightbringer. You have um Let's see. There's there's tones. Tons. Most of their their most of their attachments are Rolor. Are they? Maybe I traded wrong. I should know. I played them in the US Nationals. There's Ruby, Lightbringer, Lord of Light, and Glamour, and that's it. Yeah. Like I said, tons. That's not tons. It's four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Red God's Blessings are right, but not on this card. It doesn't synergize with this card. Neither does mm -hmm. Ruby. Okay, anyway. Uh, it's the only character you control. It's Shadow 2, and it's Terminal. Shadow attached character is plus 2 strength, and you can ki kill it. You, as an action, you can kill the attached character, which is kind of interesting, to choose mm -hmm. another character in your dead pile that was killed this phase and return it to the chosen character to play. Whew, that is kind of cool because you could like uh, play this 
like in a phase where someone like Valar Valars or like you know does something crazy like that, and just mm-hmm. like toss back your Robert and just sack some chud. Well, I mean, for the Valor, I mean, you would have to do it during the plot phase. Oh, that's true. That's a good uh, point. That's a good point. Um, and at that moment, you're not going to have gold. So if you had it in shadows, you're not going to be able to pay for it to get out. Um, no, I, however, I I misread phase. You're right. I was thinking turn, but yeah, you're good. That makes um, sense. <laughs> however, I mean, in the sense of if you had, like, someone did a pit, put to the sword um, or, you know... Uh, what do you call it? The the uh, the spear. I mm-hmm. uh, can't think of her name, but you get to choose your claim if you win by five or more strength, or, or like sea stone chair. Great... Yeah, sea stone chair. Um, you know things like that where you know your claim is chosen for you. Mm-hmm. You know you can either a bring this out of shadows, put it on the on the chud, um, and then just swap them out. Basically, that's all you're doing. I, I think my favorite part about this card is the theme because it is exactly what it says it is. Like somebody was you thought you killed Robert, but it was actually just some some chud, and now Robert's back. Mm-hmm. Like it's just so such a good mechanically themed card. Like that I have to rate it a little higher in my head because I don't know if it's like super good, but I'm gonna give it like a like a four because I love that they're able to get that theme into the, the game like that. Mm-hmm. I just it's so cool to me. And my, and in the well, meantime, that, that character gets plus two strength too, so it can be like a good defender yeah. or a good attacker. So exactly, you know, like you know, one strength character or yeah, character they're going to be a three strength for temporarily. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think it's a good card to be honest with you. I, I would say a four as well, just because cool. it has the the roller trait. Mm, um, that's true, and, I... and, and and it's a shadows card, so. Um, you know, you necessarily don't have to pay for it right away. Yeah, and the shadows, shadows speed, I guess is what I'm going to call it. Shadow speed st- uh, kneeling from Rolora is could be pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, just just have it come out of nowhere, mm-hmm. you know, when you least expect it. Yeah. All right, our next card is the Painted Dogs. Uh, it's a four-cost character mm-hmm. with a military and an intrigue <laughs> icon. It's a three-strength and non-loyal Lannister card. Uh, it's Ambush 4, and it says, Challenge action, return Painted Dogs to your hand to choose and stand Clansman character or Tyrion Lannister. It, it, so for me it feels kind of like awesomely random that they printed another clansman just out of nowhere <laughs> that like synergizes so well with like the whole ambushed clansman mechanic thing well I think it's because they knew we are doing a podcast so they were <laughs> like hey let's, let's throw these guys a bone <laughs> that's, that's actually that's why I didn't want to say it out loud but that's why we talked to Fantasy Flight and they were like oh that's good yeah. that you guys have that podcast because we're printing another clansman card but, yeah, exactly. Just yeah, for you guys. Just for you. But I, I don't know. This guy seems pretty like a pretty solid include in like a Klansman deck. Well, I think, yeah, that or just any type of... Just the ambush in general, you know? Um, That's true. That's true. Three strength, yeah. intrigue. Not necessarily... Um, I'm thinking um, every other thing but Lannister doesn't care about or cares about intrigue. But four... four, four it's it's e- equal ambush cost, so it's, it's martial cost, which is sweet. Uh, three strength yeah. and an ambush is good, and you get to ch- choose a stand Tyrion or another car- or another clansman. Like, there's some pretty cool clansmen mm-hmm. out there, right? And standing a Tyrion's sweet because the more we play, the, the more this game gets released, the more Tyrions there's going to be. So this synergizes with every single one of them, right? Well, yeah, exactly. But then also, you know, it's the bouncing in and out. So, mm-hmm. you know, you're returning him the hand, plus with the hound, the uh, the first hound. Um. You know, you're bouncing them back to hand, so just a lot of in and out kind of thing, which I I always enjoy um, with Lannister. You know, just the bouncing in and out. And plus, it goes kind of well with the Klansman theme. I think they're trying to maybe bring it back a little bit. You know. Yeah, definitely. It was it was a little it was a little uh, fad fad during the the their book big box. So. Yeah, and I mean. Let's I mean let's just look at the big box Tyrion for just a second. I mean he's a seven cost by mm-hmm. a Tricon for five strength, right? He's got the Lord trait, so you yeah. can reduce him. And he, he cares mm-hmm. about clansmen, you know, returning attacking clansmen character you control. So you could put him into the challenge, pop this guy out, right? Win the challenge yeah. and then do all the things you want to do, and then he gets and then like, you know, you, I don't know, he he synergizes well, mm-hmm. not just on his challenge action, but the fact that he can ambush for four, like it's just really cool. Well, that and like, <clears throat> excuse me, huh. um, just for that, uh, 
you know, just like the bouncing in and out with the Klansmen, that's, it's just, I don't know, I kind of like that kind of synergy with, you know, either A, you, you bring your character back to hand, or B, you know, you return the character back to your opponent's hand. Um, I always, I always think, think it's a good, you know, it's just, it's just fun, because then you can put them back to hand, and it's a and say you have an entry claim coming up, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, you can potentially pull that card. Um, it's always a good feeling, you know, when you, know, when you can bring back, bring back guy, guy, guy and, and mm-hmm. you know, yeah and with cars. with Ulf he gets like plus four strength which is sweet I mean I just want to go over these because they're, they're fun like oh, Ulf yeah, is plus yeah. four strength you know uh, if you if with with Shaga Dolph or so on a Dolph you get like um well that the, but then but then but so here's here's another thing I just thought of you have Timmit uh which then you know you kill a character after he wants a challenge Participating as an attacker, mm-hmm. um, and you get to kill a character. I think it's by the amount of cleansmen you have out. Yep, that's so, exactly right. So you put him in, and then you can, you know, do the challenge action for this uh, painted dogs. Bring them back to hand. Stand timid again, and potentially, you know, win another challenge with them. So you're, you know, you're bouncing, you know, three, four claim. Yeah. For military. Uh, there's even like some, some crazy comboing you can do with Moon Brothers and Painted Dogs and any other Lannister card where like you ambush Painted Dogs in and then you can anneal your faction card to add your like three to that, you know, that challenge from Moon oh, Brothers. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you're like, just, boom, boom, you, like all from hand and not even having to pay that much. So you get six strength for four four gold, which is sweet. But I think this yeah. guy's a four. Like the, the, he just goes in well in not just Clansman, but goes well in Lannister or I guess where he goes. Yeah, I mean, I like the the whole idea with the Klansman, uh kind of thing. Um, I'm gonna actually give it a five if Woo! you're building. If you're building a Klansman deck, he's an automatic in. Um, if you're building just a straight up Lannister deck, I'd probably give it a four, just because it has that ambush um, trait. And you know, how many other Klansmen are you really gonna have? Did you did you standard? give it less in a Klansman deck than you did overall? Um. The Klansman deck, I give it a five. Oh, okay, gotcha, Just... gotcha, gotcha. Okay, all right, let's but, move uh, on to our next card. Right. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, walk, the, walk of Atonement. Actually, this is the I where I went to go read this card and I just started getting pulled away and so i've never looked at this card before the moment <laughs> two cost walk of atonement is a loyal lannister event it's got the seven trait which is kind of interesting as a dom action you can as a dom action <laughs> discard any <laughs> amount of power from a character you control that means dom can do it at any time other people have to wait till the dominance phase yeah <laughs> discard away from me <laughs> discard any amount of power from a character you control for each power discarded discard one card at random from each opponent's hand and draw a card holy hell <laughs> Pardon my French, but Jesus I'm crow, that seems cool. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, so I had to uh, actually I had to read this a couple times just because, you know, one I was like super tired when I first read it, but you know sometimes the wording gets a little confusing. So it's you know it says discard any amount of power from a character you control. So let's say you discard two power. For each power discarded, discard one card. So does that mean you can discard two cards? If you discarded two power from a character you control, you discard one card from each opponent's hand and draw a card for each power you discarded. So like, if you did two, you would discard two and draw two. If you did five, you discard five and draw five. So it's for each yeah. power you discard from that character. Okay, so I, I took it as like, you can discard two, or you you discard two power, discard two cards, but then you ju- you're just drawing a card. The the draw card is still part of the same sentence as the for each power discarded thing. Is why I'm reading it that way. Oh, uh, okay. Well, if anyone out there has you know some insight on that, if they want to chime in, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> I am just thinking about the Cersei Lannister stuff. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay, cool. So this would only trigger once off Cersei's effect. Okay, thank God. Because yeah. like you could just be like, I'll discard five power from Cersei and then discard five of your cards and then draw five cards and then get five power on Cersei or three power since it's limit three per round. But yeah, I don't know. This is still a pretty sweet card though. I, I say shame, shame, <laughs> shame for thinking about it or shame for <laughs> no. It's, oh. I, I just wanted to say shame because that's what the 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 artwork looks like. That's true. That's true. 
Uh, and it's a walk of Tomid, so there you go. <laughs> I'm going to say I think there's some Wombo stuff with this card that could be really cool, so I'm going to give it a four because I want to see people build with it and be like, oh, by the way, you don't have any cards left in your hand, and I just have double the cards that you have or something. And I'm like, oh, God. How many yes. how many turns would it take you to recover from having to discard all your cards and your opponent drawing that many cards? Like, could you even? Like, that's so brutal. Well, yeah, if you're able to get their hand down, which Lannister's pretty good at um, with the, the whole intrigue and without his beard and That's a good all point. Because you could do, like, three power and still hit their almost their entire hand with, like, a good Lannister turn, right? Exactly, and so, you know, you know going into the next round, they're only drawing two cards. And you got, like, and... all the ones they discarded last time. Oh, my God. Well, yeah. that and, like, you know, are they going to play those two cards or are they just going to hold on to them? I don't know. Yeah, solid four for me, if not five. I want to see what people do with it, but it seems dirty. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna give it a three, just because I'm still a little unsure about the text. But um, you have to trust could... me, man. I. Uh, <laughs> that's why the only reason I'm here is because I play lots of card games. So <laughs> that's true. I'm that's just, true. I'm I, just I should trust you. Uh, all right. So we got a three from Dom, four from me. Uh, okay, our first, my favorite faction card of Greyjoy, five cost cr character with a power and a military icon. Uh, it's for strength, and it's Iron Victory's crew. It's got the Ironborn and Raider trait. Hot diggity. Uh, no attachments. Oh, yeah. And reaction, after uh, Iron Victory's crew enters play, search your deck for a warship location, reveal it, and add it to your hand. Put it into play <laughs> if it's Iron Victory, and shuffle your deck. Oh, yeah. This card Look. is so cool. I love it. Okay, so Iron Victory is the Victorian Greyjoy ship, just in case you guys don't know. He gets plus one strength for each power he has, but as a reaction, after a Lannister character is saved, it gains a power. So, After a Lannister character is saved? Oh, sorry, after a Greyjoy. I'm a Greyjoy <laughs> character is saved. Uh, so, I mean, all in all, the Iron Victory is an, an amazing ship, right? Unless you're, you got the deck to build around it. Or no, no, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. It, the Iron Victory is a pretty great ship. Because you have things, lots of things that save in Lannister. As well, or, god dang it, in Greyjoy. <laughs> in Greyjoy. So, I thought this is your favorite faction. It is my favorite faction. I just got done with <laughs> Lannister, so I'm all Lannistered out. Uh, but yeah, so maybe this card is actually better than I thought. So, because I'm, I'm saying no, like four. Cause oh, no, man. Like, you think it's five? Oh, yeah. It's only, but it, you've had, yeah, meh. I don't know. I'm saying Think four. about it. Think about it. Think about it. You put, you put in, like, the Grey Kraken. And oh, that's true. Iron you don't get to put it into play, though. You just pull. You just tutor it. Which that's okay. Yeah, that's, that's okay true. because then you, if you know you're going to be able to search your deck, um, you know you can, you know, possibly just put one copy in, maybe does, two. Does this um does this uh, effect work on Marshall since it's interplay, <laughs> or not, or in a, in yeah. the um in the um setup is what I mean. So anytime it goes into play, so you can, um. Marshal it. You can like since it's Ironborn, and say you you kill it for claim, and you have uh, Aemon. Yeah, I yeah. Name. But but what I'm asking mm -hmm. is like during setup. So like let's say this is five of your eight golden setup. Do you get to use its effect? No, no, not during setup because the game okay. hasn't officially started. Uh, okay. But if you keep killing it and keep winning dominance, you can keep searching your deck. So. Okay. Cool. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Yeah. Cause this this is like we're about to hit a huge amount of like warship stuff and i'm actually really happy that fantasy flight's doing like warship stuff for Greyjoy, and i'm happy to mm -hmm. see that they're about to release a big box that's going to just make this whole this faction not just a it's going to give it a third a third way to play right you have stealth yeah. rush you have ironborn never die and then you can have like warship shenanigans that's what i'm gonna call it warship shenanigans because yeah there's so many nonsense things you can do with all the warships out that I'm just glad to see more more love for that keyword or that trait. Yeah, I haven't played Greyjoy in a little while, so I think I'm gonna start getting back into him. Oops. Before the before the box comes out. All right. Yeah. So four from me, five from Dom, and then we got a yeah. uh, a warship. Oh my god. Uh, two cost location. A refurbished Hulk is a loyal warship card for Greyjoy. Gives you plus one uh, gold and plus one initiative. So, I mean, it's cool. Ahead of ahead of the tide mm -hmm. and stuff like that, gonna be fun. You can draw extra cards, get extra initiative, go first, get your claims yep. off. Uh, giving money, printed money is good. Can't uh, yep. can't in the name of the king that crap. 
I'm so bu- no. I'm so salty about that plot. Like every <laughs> last few times I played, like not at the re- regionals, it's just like, oh yeah, did you want to do something? Because none of your characters do stuff this turn. So are this... you talking about the King of the North? King yeah? of the North. Sorry, yeah, King of the North. That's what I yeah. meant. Oh okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of you know, they don't really have a lot of kings unless you're playing the new Balin, or um... no, no. I'm not talking about playing that as as Greyjoy. I'm talking about getting it played against you as Greyjoy, because you never have any kings. <laughs> so that's why. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, normally, yeah. Yeah. But I think this card's, like, probably, like, a three or four. I like non-printed, or I like, like, icon-printed income. And it's a warship. I'm gonna give, yeah, I kind of, I'm gonna give it a four, just because you get the income. But also, uh, that reserve, you know, Greyjoy wants to go first a lot of the times. I thought that was initiative. Uh, I'm sorry, not reserve, yeah. initiative. You're okay. right. Um, they want to go first, um, especially if you're playing, like, say, a crossing deck. Yeah. Or, um, you know, if you're playing those, uh, which goes well with the other card, um, the, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it, sorry, um, where if you're first player, you can kneel it to take a character's uh, strength and they don't. Yeah, just, like iron, you know, long ships, the, the rating ships are the long ships. Yeah, let me see here. Uh, Iron was, Island something? You, you would think we know, you know. Yeah. Since, I, since I wouldn't assume we know game. anything, but... Let me you, see here. Um, oh, who's going to get it? Iron Island Fleet. Island Fleet Scout is the other one. Yeah, hold The on raiding here. longship is what yeah. you're thinking about. Because yeah. that's the two-cost yeah. warship that challenge actions to... Yeah. yeah. If you're first well, player. Well, look at... I mean, look at how many warships there are. You know, you got in for, even in other factions like Tyrell, Baratheon. There's 14 um, of them total. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, and I, then even even JC uh, Dormont, that's a neutral. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Yeah, that's another printed econ. Uh, the thing I like, another thing I like about this one is that it doesn't have any dominance action, so it works well with like support of Harlaw and stuff like that. Because mm-hmm. you're okay mm-hmm. kneeling this and not getting anything else, and you can just kneel it till the cows come home, right? Like, and you don't mm-hmm. care. And other ships, you're like, ah, I kind of need to, I might, I have to make a decision, right? This ship is just nope, straight up fodder for kneeling warships. So, exactly, exactly. Yeah, you're probably right. Four, four. Yeah, I would say four or five. Okay. To be honest with you. All right. Uh, let's look here. Uh, we got the Drogon. He's finally here. The cool looking one. Yeah. Uh, six cost <laughs> uh, character. It's a military icon. Six strength, unique dragon, and loyal, of course. Six cost ambush. No attachments can be placed on Drogon, so get wrecked all your attachments. Uh, reaction. After you win a challenge in which Drogon is attacking, choose a character controlled by the losing opponent and use uh, Dracarius on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no cost to carry us. That is so cool. Oh, that's so terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. I mean, that's... plus he has the ambush trait. I love his know? ambush. Is the, and this is like a thing, I guess, with more powerful units like in this pack. The ambush cost is equal to the play cost. Like usually you have to pay a little yeah. more for ambush, but yeah. Uh, this is card is nuts. I mean. You're already reducing strength so much in 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 Targaryen that like throwing this guy out for six like in a challenge you weren't gonna win maybe, mm-hmm. and then you mm-hmm. automatically win it and then like potentially get two mil- claim military or three depending on what plots you have out. Like, oh my god, this is terrifying. <laughs> well, I think it's gonna push a lot of the you know if you ambush a man, um, it's gonna push and you know you can win it. Um, it's going to push for, you know, potentially a lot of unopposed challenges um, just because they know if they're going to lose, you know, then Drogon's going to do his reaction. And this part is, cr- this is kind of crazy too because Dracarius oh, says that the thing has to be participating in the challenge, right? This card just oh, says, yeah. it doesn't even no, say I'm that. S- it says choose yes. a, contr- a character controlled by the opponent and that's even yeah. better. Yeah, I should probably read the card before I make comments. Oh, no, that's so. fine. I don't do it. <laughs> I wouldn't suggest it. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that's insane. Never mind. Five. I'm going to give this... I'm going to give it a five. Yeah. This I is mean, such a bird. good... It's my, monocon, I guess. That kind of sucks, but, I mean... Oh, I, I don't I don't care. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Just, like, chud in a military challenge, and you're like, 
that's like okay this guy's gonna drug on me i better i don't know what to do because you just sit there and you're like no matter what i do i'm either gonna lose this challenge or i'm gonna lose this challenge <laughs> yeah exactly and then i'm and gonna lose it like... and get like a minus oh god it's so cool yeah exactly and it's like uh yeah all your big guys no one's safe i'm gonna burn them this this card makes me feel like i am afraid of a dragon and that's why i like it like thematically i'm afraid as afraid of this card as i would be like an actual dragon yeah well this card actually tickles my pickle so (laughs) all right well a tickle pickling card for dom is five and it's five for me too so and that's the second dragon we've seen uh wriggle was the last one and he's pretty cool too if i recall yeah, what well, you get to uh, stand them if a card if a character's killed by a card effect. So, Whew, man, you, that's you a card. Drogon, Drogon's a card effect. Him. Yeah, that's right. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. All right, we have the mm-hmm. the title card. Uh, the title card of the pack is a shadow event. It's called Indan Daznax Pit. It's a loyal event for Targaryen with the shadows three. When the challenge phase ends, stand each character. Following this phase, there's an additional challenge phase, max one per round kind of cool this effect in magic is crazy so magic the gathering there's these effect there's these cards or creatures you can play that like when they attack you will untap all creatures and there's another combat phase and these are ones that can like even though your opponent gets to untap stuff sometimes like Mm -hmm. they are game changers because you can sit here and just do multiple challenges on your you know like you get to do multiple challenges right so i don't know It, it just seems really interesting to me like you have a you could sweep someone out in a turn like that. Yeah, you actually, yeah, you actually lost, lost me when you said magic. magic so. So. Oh, shush up! Like, <laughs> basically, I'm just saying like there there's other card games that have effects that let you do multiple combat steps or multiple like things, and it can be really sure, brutal. Sure. Yeah, I I really like this card. Um, just because you know, just go right back into the another challenge phase. You know, just kind of beat down their military or you know another power or whatever yeah it's kind of interesting too because like you play this right and if you're not first you have Mm -hmm. to wait till they do their challenges again which is kind of interesting yeah but it's okay i mean when you have like drogo now yeah no and and Mm -hmm. think about like the the craziness with this and crossing like Mm -hmm. you could get like a second crossing proc in the same turn like, think mm-hmm. about how much, like, if you can get that, like, if you, because typically crossing decks are based around a combo that gets you a ton of power on that last challenge, right? Exactly. And if you do that twice in a single turn, you might win, like, straight up, if you do it right, and you have the turn set up, right? Yeah, and of course you can just have it, I mean, it's a Shadows card, so, um, you know, you can just have it sit in Shadows, and, you know, people, it's another Shadows card where you're automatically not going to think, oh, it's Aegon, um, Yep. You know, Targaryen. Which, in a sense, then, if you wanted to, you can, um, you know, have them both in there. And then with that uh, King character, uh, I can't know, I can't pronounce his name, um, but you discard a card, bring a card out of Shadows, you reduce by three, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. bring a card out of Shadows. Yeah. You know, you can do that. Is that, tar- uh, is that a Targaryen card? Oh, yeah. It's the, that's the King guy. I, oh, okay. He's the one that's, I don't know his name. It starts with an H. Um, Has it, well, what pack was it from? Do you remember? Music? Uh, no, it was the one before that. Has a, I remember it too. It's a, a anyways, long time ago. yeah. Anyways, it's it's a good card, but um, you know, you can definitely, you know, discard a card, bring this out, or bring Aegon out during the second challenge phase. Yeah, his dear Zolorak. That's that's who mm-hmm. you're thinking of. Yeah, I got you. And you know. Then you you just got him plus another you know army or mercenary character out. I like call Drogo too. Like, would you like four four military challenges in your challenge? <laughs> sure, why not? I mean, why not? Like, let's do it. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think. I mean, this card is it does cost five five though if you play it in one turn, right? I, I'm gonna give it a five just because of that, and then you have Drogon. You know, if you have him out, you know, you're getting yeah. two military claim already. I'm, I'm going to give it a, th- a four or a four and a half because it does cost a lot to put out. Like, it costs five to put out because you have to shadow it and then you have to pay three. And I think it's a powerful effect and it requires setup and it could be really cool. And I want to uh-huh. see I want to see what happens with it before I give it a five. But I do like this effect. Nah, it's a five all the way. Don't you tell me no. That's rude. Yeah. If 
if anyone's listening, you want to know the right answer. It's a five. Yeah, I said a five but, in my answer. I said four point five. Put put like at least two copies in your deck. Like <laughs> you will you will not be disappointed. Okay, let's move along. <laughs> All right, uh, we have our. Uh, Oh man, we're at 50 minutes here. All right, we have a Mar first Martel card, Maester Miles. It's a two cost character with an intrigue icon and two power. Maester card, mm -hmm. challenge action, kneel a Maester Miles to choose a character with printed cost equal to or lower than the number of plot cards in your used pile until the end of the phase that character loses a challenge icon of your choice. Mm. Weird. Uh, it's a weird way to calculate a cost. Yeah. Uh. It, I mean, it fits with the Martell strategy, I guess, of going hot, going long, uh, but it doesn't do anything until you're longer. Well, I mean, you're, yeah, it's, it's definitely a long game card. It, um, isn't there better cards that take away challenge icons in Martell? Oh yeah, there's so many. <laughs> and if you have to kneel this dude, that means he's not contributing to the entry, so he's just sitting there doing the one thing he does once a turn, right? Yeah. Two or three. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to give it a two. Okay. Easy. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Zero cost. He calls it thinking. Loyal Martell event. Interrupt. When, this, when an effect of an opponent's non-agenda, non-plot trigger, a uh, triggered ability would initiate, cancel those effects unless that player pays one gold. Uh, cards like this are really powerful, again, in Magic mm -hmm. the Gathering, but I won't go too deep into that because I don't want to confuse you. <laughs> but causing people to have to pay even small amounts is kind of like the death by a thousand cuts when it comes to Econ. Like, mm -hmm. it, it want, losing one gold because you want to trigger an effect means your whole turn can change, right? Exactly. So I'm a, I'm a fan of this. I like that it hits uh, triggered effects from almost anything. Because, mm -hmm. so, like, non-agenda, non-plot is, is very specific. Uh, and mm -hmm. it's better than treachery as far as like what it can hit mm -hmm. so I'm a fan I think this card's like a 4 or 5 yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a 5 just cause it's 0 cost Yeah. and, and because the artwork it looks like uh, Doran's just getting punk slapped <laughs> so <laughs> thematic win <laughs> I know and he called it thinking yeah and she's like talking crap she's like my father's very yeah. good at doing nothing what's up yeah, he looks like he got he got punk slapped, and he thought he was sinking, but apparently he's not. <laughs> he got wrecked. All right, <laughs> our first neutral is the Inn at the Crossroads. It's a two-cost shadow location with the Riverlands trait. Shadow one, so it comes out for a total of three, and it's a Dom action. Kneel the Inn at the Crossroads to draw three cards and choose an opponent. Give control of the Inn at the Crossroads to that player. Oh, my gosh, melee craziness. <laughs> uh yeah. I wish uh, it went back into shadows when you gave it control to someone. That would be so fun. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, like that would it, be so crazy. Yeah, for melee, you know, it's one of those you would have to make like a pack with someone, and mm -hmm. hopefully they keep their word to keep passing it back and forth. But in jousting, I, I I really like it. You know, it's like here I'll draw three cards. I'll give it to you. Is it good enough to put into a deck over anything though? Like. I guess this card would be good for a thing like, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like, because everybody wants to draw cards, right? Oh, of course. It gives you more options. But I guess for like the one turn, you get three more cards than your opponent, and then it starts to to like to to even out, right? Well, I mean, if you think about it, you know, you're getting your three cards, you're giving it to your opponent. You know, you automatically know if your opponent uses it. You're gonna get it right back. Yeah, but then they get three cards, right? So the only time you get advantage from this is the first time you use it for that next turn, right? Because you have now three extra cards that your opponent didn't. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. It's I, like, I like, like counting it. coppers, right? Like, would you rather just play counting coppers to do this, or would you? Is it no. good enough to? Is it good enough to 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 let your opponent draw three every other turn? I'd rather have this than counting coppers. I... Just because counting coppers has two gold. <laughs> That's that's true. That's what I was asking. Like, is the downside of this good enough to to not be on a plot, right? But and you say yes, and I say probably not. But I I give it a, I give it a, like a a four. I was gonna say like a two or three on this one for me. No, <laughs> I don't like giving control of something so powerful to my opponent. Yeah, but then if they use it, 
They're giving it right back to you. Yeah, but then you. they get three cards for using it. So, like, I don't want that part. That's the part I don't want. They can <laughs> keep it. As long as they say they can't use a Dominus action, I'd be fine with this card. But they can. And that's why I don't like it. All right. Eh, I'm, I'm the I, jerk I, here. I, Dom is the right one again. <laughs> uh, let's no, go on. A pinch of powder. <laughs> it's a no-cost item weapon attachment. Uh, that was a weapon. That's kind of cool. You, like, flick it in people's eyes. Uh, <laughs> Shadow 1. Reaction after you win a <laughs> Intrigue or Power Challenge by 5 or more strength as an attacking character, you return an attached character to its owner's hand. Designed by, designed by uh, Lucas Reed? Is that how that? Lucas Reed? That's kind of cool. I think so, yeah. That's Lucas in the picture, so... Yeah, he looks like he's up to no good. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> uh, so, I think this is kind of cool. I mean... I like shadows? it. Yeah, it's... A, it's something that can be happening like after defenders are declared for the challenge, which is kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I like I like everything about this card. I think it's pretty solid. Um, it's not. I like it a lot. It's like the the what's the imprisoned one from Martel. Oh, from Martel. And it's like, but it's a little bit faster, a little bit less cost, and has a little bit harder time triggering, I guess. Well, that and it's non-terminal, so it can oh, go back to your. Oh boy! Hand. I didn't even think about that. That's so cool. I'm gonna give this mm-hmm. a four or five even maybe in a good day it's a four and a half yeah i would give it i would give it a four um you know just because you have to just the win condition by five or more strength and yeah. most of the time i kind of suck at that so just play might of the reach all uh, the time that's true <laughs> i just put i'll just put it in six copies yeah perfect <laughs> all right yeah illegally <laughs> Oh man, I blocked it. I didn't think about the plot. Okay. Uh, oh yeah. Double dealing. Uh, it's a five. Is it five or socks? Or, uh, five income or six income? Uh, I think it's five. Okay. Let me see. I will change this before the next time we do it. I, I believe it's this. five. Yes, it is a five. There we go. It's a five. Nailed it. All right. Yeah. Five cost. Uh, seven initiative and one claim. Double dealing is a scheme, and it's a six reserve. Is a plot action. Choose a plot card in your opponent's use pile. Double dealing gains that card's printed text uh, until you reveal a new plot limit once per round. So you can't. Can you, if you scheme if you if you reigns of Castamere in double dealing and you played a double dealing, do you get to do double dealing again? Uh, no, because it's a plot action. But even oh, you're right. <laughs> Suck it, reigns of Castamere. Yeah, that's. That was one of the complaints on the uh, Facebook groups they were talking about. But I'm fine with that. I actually kind of, I kind of like it. It's like another, you know, Varus Riddle. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. But it, it's not just when revealed. It's just any plot you can, you take their text. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. I guess it has to be in the use. So if you time it wrong, you kind of mess up. But I mean, yeah, I think you're right. Uh, Seven initiative, five five income is pretty solid too. Yeah, so I mean, you know, in six reserve, that's a pretty good, you know, reserve to have mm-hmm. for a plot. I I like it. I mean, I'm excited to to use it. So I'm gonna give it like a I'm gonna give it a four. Yeah, I was kind of thinking like like three or four here. I think that it it's pretty sweet when you need it. Uh, it's got a good income value. Yeah, we'll say four. Yeah, I, I honestly, I would say this pack, I, I've pretty much liked every card, except for that uh, Baratheon Maester dude. <laughs> uh, and that the two Maesters, Martell and Baratheon, like, I just was like, eh. They just need more Maesters yeah. for that agenda. Yeah, I guess so. But better <laughs> Maesters. I mean, come on. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, that's our pack. I agree. I think this pack was pretty fun. It has some, a lot of new cool cards in it. We got uh, another dragon, mm-hmm. another cool adult dragon, which is fun. Um, oh yeah so yeah well thanks for watching everybody um, bearded clansman uh, I am Kyle son of Kyle <laughs> I'm, I'm Dom Shaggy Dom <laughs> oh Shaggy Dom I forgot my own name <laughs> that's okay, okay. Uh, so uh, if you guys want to know where we play it's down in the bottom right uh, we're not sponsored by those stores but those are the three stores in Colorado we play at uh, Chaos Games and more Petrus Family Games and Collector Mania uh, you know like comment subscribe if you do that type of thing and uh, we'll see you next time mm-hmm. Yeah, see you guys.